University. I've been aware of uh, Phil's work for a while now. A few years ago, he won uh, a national e-learning award for uh, teaching in economics. Um, so he teaches his students about the world of social and digital media, but also actually uses them in his teaching. So he uses Flickr and YouTube and whatnot in his teaching. So a way of handling, giving individuals feedback to like them to students is to record himself giving his comments on the students' work and share that on YouTube, as you can see. Um, Bill's topic is something called Wikipedia books, or some people call them wiki books. I uh, talk about this in a few events I've done with educators, and I explain this thing called Wikipedia books, and it sinks in, and they go, oh my god, it's going to change everything. And that's the topic that Bill's going to talk about. Here we go. Okay, um, um, as Matt has said, I'm, I'm Phil Wayne from London University, and what I'm going to talk to you about today, as I said, is, is wiki books. And uh, what I'm going to talk about seems slightly different. A lot of a lot of people have been talking about kind of editing individual articles and stuff. But what I've been taking advantage of is existing articles and putting those into collections to make them into teaching materials. So I'm sure the educators here will find it very interesting. And I think most people should find something interesting and don't take something away from it. Um, there is a, a kind of wiki book project which is aimed at producing lots of educational materials. Um, but I've seen the term used interchangeably. What I've been doing is using the Wikipedia book creator, I've been to it. And there's a good thing about Wikipedia. Um, <coughs> I have, it took me a while to, to, to spot this particular feature. You know, you kind of you use it because it's really quick and fantastic and you can find all this stuff. And actually, of course, there's all kinds of other little tools and resources that you don't necessarily spot. Um, and then the print and export menu, I, I realised after a while, I thought, this is not trying to create a book, what this is like to do. And it's as good as it work, it lets you create a book, which is a fantastic thing to do. So, um, I'm going to show you some examples of wiki books, and I'm going to refer to them, and talk about how I've used them to help kind of deliver teaching in these times when we're constrained from resources and times, etc., etc. Um, if you click on the Wikibook Creator, and I've, I've got a link in this slide, I've got a slide available, and so I've got some demos that are up uh, on the web where I actually go through the creation of the book. I create a book in four minutes and that's given your time. Just to show you how nice and straightforward it is to do once you've done it the first couple of times. Is that we can go to the Wikibook Creator and it allows us to create these Wikibooks. Um, it's a by default they're electronic books, they're available in PDF, and um, it's uh, only at formats. Uh, PDF is, is ideal, especially for many educators. Um, and there are also other options, uh, which I'll come back to later on. I will click into it now. I've got a link here where I kind of create um, an economics primer. I create a book, it's about 100 pages of stuff, collections of articles, I do it for four minutes, fantastic results to complement other things that I'm using. Okay. Why might educators want to use these books? Well, if I was in the elevator pitch to you, try to sell it, uh, the first three should well, sell it to a lot of people. They're free, fantastic. They're credible. We've, we've discussed issues around this, but I think a, an awful lot of the material on Wikipedia is very credible, and there's lots of kind of papers and stuff that have looked at it, and it's getting increasingly credible. Um, and they're copyright clear. Okay. Copyright clearance is a really big thing, especially as a lot of universities and other institutions increasingly put stuff onto virtual learning environments of various kinds. There's all kinds of things that educators we got away with, where we were kind of breaking copyright, we weren't adhering to things, but it was taking place in closed classrooms. We photocopying stuff, printing stuff off, it was between us and the students and a few other people. And there were clear guidelines, but people didn't always adhere to them if, as a community, but we're kind of honest. But management especially are a lot more concerned these days because if we breach copyright, especially in stuff put under VLEs and stuff, it's much easier to pin universities down and say, or others to say, you, you breached the copyright on that, you should have put that up there, and you can get into all kinds of problems. And certainly in my institution, there's a thing now that when we log into the VLE, it kind of makes a statement saying, everything that NTU uses is clear for copyright. We're good, we're a good institution, okay? And a lot of staff a few years ago, by some point included, have put up lovely collections of PDFs and extra materials that we could give to students. 
And then we thought, actually, we're not sure these are copyright clear. Some of them are, some of them are. We have to clear lots of stuff away. But one of the great things about creating wiki books, because it comes from Wikipedia and through its sources, it's copyright clear. Absolutely fantastic and useful. Other things that are good about it is that they're, they're, they're customizable in the sense that you can put different contents in, as I'll illustrate. They're very easy to update and already once you've kind of done it a couple of times. Um, and so, from a, a kind of busy educator's point of view, possibly from a management point of view, you know, we're all struggling against tight resources in terms of time and money. There's a, certainly in higher education costs, the increased fees have come in this year, there's more and more emphasis on this kind of thing. Anything that can help us provide collections of useful materials that help in the overall process of learning and teaching is to be very welcome. I found them to be very useful. Um, other reasons for using them, you know, if something's free, it's credible, it's convenient. They're great drivers for individual staff to adopt them. And I think one of the nice things about Wikibooks is when I show them to other colleagues, it's a great way to get people to go, do you know what, actually, I could do that. That wasn't that difficult. That wasn't that clever. Brilliant, I can use it. It's a great way to get people engaged with Wikipedia in a more interactive way. And it's a great way to get them to sort of produce kinds of you know, basic e-learning documents and move along that path as well. Hopefully as well, it helps improve the educational experience because as, as editors, as people who decide what we put in our wiki books, we, we choose stuff that's going to be appropriate for the module and those students. And there are ways that it can help enhance the overall learning process. You know, we're giving students structured selections of material that should support stuff. I currently use it to complement other course materials, so traditional kind of PowerPoints and lectures and handouts that are created. Um, but I can see, you know, I imagine some people would think about moving more and more towards a thing where you've got complete collections of kind of Wikipedia generated books and resources. And there are lots of movements around the world that are trying to look at open educational books, open educational resources, and especially in the states, people are looking and going, we've got really tight budgets here in, in, in the various individual states. We're spending huge amounts of money on kind of set textbooks, but they tend to use them more than we do in the UK. Hang on, there are open source alternatives. There are ways that we can avoid spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on stuff that actually, it's really out there. It's already out there. We just need to get it from a different source and look at it in a different way. And I also think Wikibooks are good in a kind of general sense. You know, my specialism is talking to educators, uh, but really parents, peers, a lot of people have talked about peer instruction today for other students. Students can put this together themselves and other kind of de facto pedagogues. So a lot of us are involved in learning and teaching and education in a very kind of wide sense. You know, I, I'm involved in that with my children, you know. Okay, so some examples of actual use. If I create a wiki book, what it does is it, it, it lets me get together a collection of articles. Um, if we're not short of time at the end, I'll show the video, otherwise we'll link to it and you can see it in action. But essentially what you can do is say, I want to create a wiki book, and a little uh, dial um, area appears, and as you go through Wikipedia, you can say, actually, add this article to my book. So it's find another one. Add this article to my book as well. Add this article to my book, okay? Um, and it's really useful. You can put them together really quick. It'll even suggest additional articles that you might want to add to it. So things that you perhaps haven't thought were linked in somehow, the system will suggest to you, hey, you've been collecting these, do you want to collect these ones as well, okay? It's very easy to get carried away and generate really, really huge documents. <laughs> but um, it's just one of those things that kind of come to practice. Now I tend to use, as I said, to um, complement existing materials. So a typical thing might be, this is just some screenshots from, that I took from our VLE. So here's a bit where I was talking about compute, computer media communications. And I've got my PowerPoint that I used in the live classroom session. Um, I've got a document that I created, okay, that was probably about four to six sides long. And I've got my wiki book, which is probably more likely about kind of 60, 70, 80 sides long, okay? And it's a really good way to collect um, additional resources together. Again, okay, another example, doing a session on Tesco, PowerPoint, something I created, I know it's four sides long. Tesco wiki book is about 70 sides where I put different things together, all relevant, all things to do with the subject of Tesco, which was relevant to a particular module. And again, an easy option we've got is to produce different lengths of book and different depths of material. Okay? And I'll show you much. So here we've got a unit where we did a, a session about Web 2.0, uh, got the PowerPoint, 
There's, there's, there's a module blog and all kinds of other materials as well. But all the VLE the students could then look and I'd say to them, if you're really interested in this topic, why not look at the longer version? If you're kind of interested in not sure, then look at the shorter version. And what I've done when I've loaded it up is I've put here the kind of the length in A4. If, so if you were to print it off, the students can see the full length one is 159 pages of A4 equivalent in that PDF that I created. And this one, the short one, 53 pages of A4. Because sometimes you try to make a decision about do I want to include this or not, is it relevant or not? Um, and again, it's kind of a decision that you have to make as an educator, just as you do when you're putting all your other materials together. Um, I have to say that um, the feedback we've been getting from the students is that the students like this kind of thing because they like being given suitable structured support and materials, no great surprise there. I have to say, I did have a concern when I did this, and what my concern was that, oh, suppose I start producing these wiki books, okay, to go with the materials, and what happens if when I'm getting essays and have assignments back, all I'm getting back is stuff that's only from the wiki books. And what was interesting is that I clearly, I was getting stuff back, some of it was clearly from there or kind of channeled through the wiki books, but I was getting a lot of other good stuff as well, because what was happening is the students were saying to me formally, actually, it allowed me to focus on the topic, look at the other materials as well, and because it's Wikipedia, you get a whole set of references that are generally with the articles that are better articles, and it was really easy for them to look at those references and go off and find other materials and find things that I wasn't presenting to them. So that was a kind of risk I took with the experiment and paid off, came out really well. So when you put one together, so this is, for example, the Web 2.0 one, this is a screenshot, and you can see We've got the page numbering down here. So when you take an article, it calls it a page, as you might mean, but really it's more like a kind of chapter. And so I was getting things in where I was looking at lots of relevant things. So Web 3.0, then I also put in social media and social networking services. And then in the long version, some specific examples, Facebook, the Pinterest, Tumblr, etc., etc. So it was all created there. References are all there, fantastic. And the article licenses, okay? So it's all licensed, it's very friendly. In that sense, it's really good. What's useful as well, I had a dilemma with one topic where I wasn't sure about whether to include the image or not, because I was looking at internet censorship, and the image itself was a, a kind of controversial image. It was, not, it was, it was there, and I could see it, I wasn't sure whether not to use it. And in the end, I thought, well, I'm going to generate the book, and I'll see how it goes. And when I generated the book, it wasn't there. And I realised, it was clever enough to realise, because it was an album cover, that the rights were covered, so because that material wasn't covered, it didn't include it in the book it put together. So that was really, really useful, uh, really, really helpful. Okay, so I deal in, in electronic formats because you can put them onto your VLE, um, you can look at them on your iPads and your Kindles and your laptops because PDFs are well supported um, format. Um, you know, you can also kind of, we can print them off. So if I, print, if I print them off for reference, here's my economics primer, okay? So that's just like the printed version of it. Um, I've got my Facebook overview thing. So if I want a set of reference materials or things to show to external examiners and stuff, again, I can put the printed version off if I find it useful. Some people like printed stuff. Some people like purely digital stuff. I'm the kind of age where I kind of, you know, I like to use a bit of both. Uh, and again, sometimes for handouts in, in sessions, um, I might do like you know kind of little sessions like a questionnaire primer, a general research session primer that's designed to be handed out to students. And again, I'm clear from the license to do it, and I use it where it's complemented of materials. Okay. Um, one of the nice things about something like using the PDF format is lots of people kind of use PDFs, and of course in the in the standard reader. Um, people sometimes forget that you can, you, know, you can add comments in, you can highlight stuff. So actually, um, it's quite an efficient little e-book system in some way. So you turn out PDFs, you can download their own copy. The Adobe Reader doesn't cost anything, the, the reader is free, and they can put stuff in so they can begin to interact with stuff. If there are things that they think that they should highlight or want to bring back to the discussion, they're not sure about, want to talk about it, highlight things for revision, whatever it happens to be, they can do that. And I do the same with my versions as well, and it's really useful. In some ways, this might be quite a good first step for people who are thinking they'd like their students to begin editing articles, would be to get them to edit stuff like this effectively offline, and then perhaps think about moving on to actually editing stuff online, where we know sometimes there's some issues around people doing it. Um, but again, you know, this is a really good way of joining up to, connect to a couple of technologies, Wikibooks, with Adobe PDFs, 
Um, and suddenly, you've got a document that you can edit, you can annotate, etc., etc. And again, for, for staff who are not particularly kind of e-learning oriented, it's not a difficult thing to do. It's a nice way for staff to take small steps with kind of e-learning and interactivity. And a great resource for the students in terms of them annotating stuff, making their own notes, etc., etc., etc. Something else I've done, um, which is kind of, <coughs> it's a kind of a bit of an experiment, is to try and look at presenting stuff in slightly different ways. Whereas um, you can use services like Issue, for example, which will kind of represent a, um, a PDF um, book. And what we'll do is rather than having a static PDF, it makes it into like a virtual book. There's quite a few services that do this kind of thing. And again, um, this year was one where I checked the license and it seemed to be okay, that the one that didn't want to override the license that the book had been produced under. And so I can put a link into students, and when they see it, this is just a screenshot, actually when they click on it, kind of the pages turn on the book. So again, something that would encourage some students to perhaps to actually read the document rather than uh, not read the document. Because with all documents, the problem is we can create all kinds of stuff, but if the students don't actually read it or interact with it, it's a very limited use. So just in that sense, you know, while kind of taking care to observe the CC license, you know, they're, they're quick to create, so they're easy to re-edit. You can easily tailor them to your learning and teaching. I, for example, have been given various new modules this year, or sometimes you realize that a topic has changed quite quickly. So it might be that something new has come along. So suddenly Tumblr is, something you want to talk about, or Twitter, or Pinterest, or something new in your particular field of study, great, put that in, and take something else out, or whatever is suitable, you know, it's really quick and easy to do. Um, so you can edit them around to your own preferences, it's nice thing to do. Now, one question might be, well, is it really a book, you know, um, and in some ways, I'd say, well, yeah, yeah, I'll have a look, I'll just check on this, is it, is it a book by any kind of definition? Well, one definition is this, I won't read it all out, I hope you can all read it, okay? Is that it's essentially it's a set of written, printed, illustrated blank sheets all written on, da 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 da. And of course, one of the places I looked is I went to Google and said, define a Wikipedia called it up and said, as one of the first returns from Google, which is a common event, said, yeah, it's definitely a book, okay? So as far as I'm concerned, it's a book. It may be in different formats and different ways to show it, but it's a book. Now, if you want to create some actual books, you can create actual books. There is an option, okay? So Wikipedia links up, for example, with Wikipedia Press, and it lets you convert your PDFs, okay, into an actual book. Um, and it does it really quickly and efficiently. It's a nice meeting of a couple of different technologies. So we've got Wikipedia's kind of community-generated community resource, and we've got print-on-demand technology coming together. And one of the things I did before I came down here is I created a couple of books. Okay? Um, I pass them around so you can look at them. It's got my name on, it says I've edited them, it's all cleared in the collections of articles, etc. etc. And this was delivered in kind of three, four working days. You know, a really nice thing to do. I'll put them out so people can pass them around and see. I've got a couple of screenshots that I'll pull up just to give you some kind of idea of it. So from PDFs, if, if you're so inclined, you can create actual books, okay? So, as I speak a bit, just a couple of close-ups. One of the reasons I was quite keen on this is that it would actually be a nice thing to raise some issues for this presentation. But actually, this is actually from a module that's just, just finished running. It's been running for over 10 years. And I've got all kinds of tables, and I realised that kind of a decade worth of work would all go on for a little memory stick, which was, which was a bit sad in some ways. And but actually, for some of the stuff, I would like a kind of some kind of archive, analog thing to get from it. And a book's fantastic, a book's really useful that way. Um, and inside, it, it puts your editor information in. You've got the option to add a foreword. Okay, so just before we had the conference, I put my little foreword in, um, telling you all about it, and saying that basically this is for a talk I was doing at the conference. And what I'm trying to emphasize, emphasize here is just how quick, convenient, efficient it all is. I'm getting notes from Mark in which are either positive or tied up, I'm not sure, so I'll keep uh, whipping on. As I said, I'll make these materials available to anyone who wants them. Um, there are some kind of holdbacks to this. Some colleagues are, of course, a bit sceptical about whether or not it's credible. Um, there are some issues I can imagine that some people say, the students are coming in, they're going to pay more fees. 
do you think they want to just read a load of Wikipedia articles? Okay. Um, to which my answer would be, look, if we can create materials for free using Wikipedia, then the money we would have spent elsewhere on certain things, let's then redirect it to other good resources. So, so, get, so there's a kind of there's a win-win there um, if we go for it carefully and we think that, you know, sort of think about it. And of course, as an individual, you know, we, as, as a group of people, as a group of individuals, there are limits to what we can do. But we can draw on the services of that whole global community that's feeding into the various kind of Wikipedia projects and the foundation and everything. And it's a great resource that we can we can pull on and make use of. So hopefully some of you go off and think, actually, I'd quite like to have a look at that. I'll find it quite useful in my work. Thank you for your time. If you've got any questions, I'll obviously I will take them. I'll take them there. Thanks so much, Phil. to see EduWiki concepts mentioned in a printed book exists. Thanks, Phil. I thought that was um, really interesting, actually. Uh, I'm Chris Trost, uh, working with WikiVet, and we've also been using PDF Public Data. Um, and I, I definitely think you've outlined some of the, the benefits for it. Just wondering about some of the, the issues that people might think of. Uh, you know, one of the big reasons I think Wikipedia works and wikis in general work, as soon as you print a textbook, it's out of date. Mm. So as soon as you do print a wiki book, you've lost that connection to you know, the updating, evolving content. Um, I mean, I also thought you're starting to take people away from the actual content, and it's further away from that edit button. So it's easier for them to slip into the role of a consumer instead of actually producing content. Um, and also, I guess you're kind of, I feel we're almost going back a step and going back to a traditional teacher, here's what you should learn. Whereas I think what Wikipedia does really well is, because you're there in, a con in the content, you can then explore content and yeah. go wherever you like. And now we've gone back to, well, here's what I think you should learn. Yeah. What I try and do, and I think a lot of educators do this, is not kind of, here's what you think you should learn, but here are, as part of a whole set of the learning teaching experience, a whole set of materials, a whole set of engagement in the classroom, uh, be it online, etc., etc. You know, I video lots of stuff, I do classroom stuff, is that occasionally students are quite welcome of sets of structured material. So what you wouldn't want to do is kind of go back to a Victorian teacher and teach stuff by rote. Absolutely not. But occasionally, Structured sets of stuff is very reassuring. It's very reassuring at revision time. It's very reassuring for some of the weaker students. Um, and hopefully what I should be doing, part of my job, is to get people to keep bouncing off that material and going off and finding new stuff or re-engaging with it. Or where people perhaps say, well actually is that out of debt or something? You know, go, yeah, well, actually th stuff has probably moved on. And interestingly enough, what I've done over a couple of years is I've regenerated sometimes the same set of articles. But I've gone back and just regenerated it, knowing full well it's been updated. You know, so I've looked at it, I'm like, brilliant, it's been updated. So the stock price of Google has been updated, the stock price of Facebook has been updated, up, down, etc., etc. And people are doing the updating for me, but I can still have a structured set of articles that I'm going to use then as part of something that I know that I need to do. Because it's great to have the open learning engagement, but um, one of the things that Tony was saying, a group of people, is that many of us have kind of got modules rooted in a kind of slightly earlier tradition. And I think we're at a transition stage here where we're, we're using all these new services and facilities, but we still have to bring it back to some extent to where it's aligned with assessment and outcomes and accreditation. Now those kind of things will change, uh, and they'll change in good ways and change in bad ways, but day-to-day -day teaching at the moment, we still have to link to that and to recognise that, and that's one of the things that I think we have to deal with. Um, two things. So um, I have the same kind of concerns, but I think that there's, there's um, ways of using that. So the first thing is, um, every year I print off my blog as a book uh, for five people, basically family members, including my grandmother. So my grandmother now thinks I'm a published author, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but it means that she actually reads my blog, and she doesn't understand half of what's going on. But then I explained these are not a blog, it's not, it's a kind of way into doing that. It's a similar kind of thing to get people into the Wikipedia community. The second thing is, um, one of the most enlightening experiences I had for the, the kind of new generation of learners was when I was teaching history in, in schools. And I, I followed a learner just around the school and saw how much they had to look at screens like this all day. 
Um, and I know that that's basically what I do all day now. And so when I go to bed, I listen to audio books and look at my Kindle or a, a physical book. So um, the ability to do that kind of thing while still getting the, some of the value of the knowledge and, and some of the stuff is really valuable. And I think sometimes we forget those additional qualities to, to books, which are sometimes just looked at. Mm -hmm. I just want to say why I thought things are particularly important, but um, yeah, active learning and uh, important point to make like that, but university courses still ask students to buy textbooks. And this is an option. Would you rather pay a tenor to have um, a book that's customised by the lecturer to be exactly about what the course is about, or would you rather spend 50 quid on the standard book, two or three chapters which you won't do the course? But particularly learning sort of high level courses, yeah. if you're doing biosciences and you've got a course about some specific genes or specific proteins, you're going to be faced with that choice. Yeah. And that's why it's going to change everything. Yeah, I think sometimes it's seen as an either or option. Either you, you write your own materials or you buy into something. And, and a lot of universities don't like to buy into stuff because lecturers get, well, well, my course is specific to me, so it's special. But actually, this is a good compromise because there's a common resource there, but how you choose to collect, put the atoms together changes things. And I think as, as groups of people, if you think any areas are lacking, then it goes back to what other people have said about, well, get involved, improve the individual articles and it'll improve the collections and the two can feed upon one another. So I mean, you can do that, you can improve the articles themselves, which is what we encourage everyone to do, but can you, um, as a lecturer, in that format, in that system, can you um, contextualise and put some kind of text in between the articles, or is it literally taking each article and putting them sequentially? In the default version, you can just um, take it and it generates it as is, okay? Uh, but there are some workarounds, which I'm happy to talk about the people. There are a couple of ways around it uh, that, where you can add bits in. Or you could choose an option where you say, all right, well, I've got the PDF now, and actually I'll put additional notes and comments in using the PDF technology that's available. Yeah, I'm just going to add something the article itself. I don't know if I'm missing it, just put it in. Um, Yes, and what I, I'll, I'll confess one thing is I see a lot of things I think, do you know what, I'd like to put something in here, I'd like to put some comments on it, and I'd like to engage with it. Um, but I've realised that whilst I aspire to do that, there's a lot of times when because of deadlines, this, that, and the other, I'm not going to do it. So rather than doing nothing, I'll, put to, I'll bring together these collections, and I'll, I'll put comments in, I'll put them into context, etc., etc. But ideally, yeah, I need to, I need to be thinking about how I can improve the articles. And again, colleagues here have talked about you know, getting students involved in, and improving the individual articles to improve the collections. But I'm realistic, sometimes I ain't gonna get around to anything to the individual articles. Uh, I've encountered some of the same problems that other colleagues have, where you put a lot of thought into something and it's gone. It's zapped, somebody didn't like it for some reason, it gets zapped, and that's, that's an issue that I know the community needs to think about addressing. But this way, I put my collections of articles together, and nobody, no Vulcan, nobody, or oh, whoever, uh, so I'm just thinking some of the nicknames that some of the editors use, okay, um, can zap that, because I've done it, and they can't zap it, they can't touch it, that's for me to then use, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas if I edit the article online, then I'll sometimes you enter into this dialogue or this issue where people are editing and changing things, okay? Um, Do you have one more question? I don't know who must okay. go around. Actually, I'm going to make a comment on the way because I've got the microphone. Um, so, uh, if we imagine Wikipedia articles as like the jigsaw pieces, yeah. you're kind of making jigsaws. Um, do you ever notice when bits are missing and you go, oh, there's not an article on that thing? I, I do, and one of the things I've been um, keen here to listen to colleagues today is thinking, actually, what I need to do is you take the time to step back on and, and bring in the process whereby I've got some kind of space in the syllabus so that where we recognise this, I can work with my students and follow some of the examples of colleagues here and begin to put that right and begin to correct it. So I think one of the, the biggest problems sometimes is we go, oh, well, that's missing, oh, that's not very good. Well, well, fix it then, put something in to do it. And, you know, and I'm, I'm guilty that I don't fix stuff more often or engage stuff more often, but that's not to say that I don't recognise that's a really, really good thing to do. Shall we end there? Because we've got to talk. <laughs>
please call me any time you like over the, you know, over the course of the conference, and, and you've got my email details, etc., etc. So thank you very much. Yes. Tell us about the entertainment for tonight. There is entertainment tonight going on. There is, right. So 